You think dirty keto and you think just absolute, complete, sloppy food, right? Well, what I wanted to do here is lay out how closely similar dirty keto and clean keto can really be to one another. Just to be able to demonstrate, it's not hard to tilt towards that dirty keto side, but it's also not really much more expensive to shift over to the clean keto side. In fact, you could probably do it at the same price point. It's all about convenience and all about some of these other things. So we'll break it down, make it nice and easy. Please do hit the red subscribe button and then hit the little bell icon as well so that you can subscribe to this channel and always get notifications. All right, we'll just dive right in. This is an example breakfast on dirty keto. Cheap eggs, like just the simplest, most basic eggs that you can get, not spending the extra couple of dollars for pasture raised. Frozen sausages, I say this because sausage really isn't that bad. Pork sausage is actually a pretty decent fat profile, but when you get the frozen ones, which a lot of people do get, like the frozen breakfast sausages, the little short ones, they're just loaded with garbage in them. Uh, mozzarella shreds, I say because generally that's not real mozzarella, it's just processed mozzarella that's in the shredded stuff. So again, cheap, simple cheese, right? But then you get to like people doing their keto coffees and they'll add straight up, not grass-fed butter, just regular butter and throw it in there. Uh, they'll do some flavored creamers, like those Coffee Mate flavored pumpkin spice creamers and stuff like that, where it's partially hydrogenated oil. It's trans fats, right? And then they'll just sweeten it up with some Splenda, and then maybe they'll have a spoonful of peanut butter. You see, it doesn't look too terribly bad. And quite frankly, it's gonna be fine if you're doing keto. I don't want you to develop an orthorexic tendency where you just you know, are afraid of food. My point here is to show the positive piece, what you can do to make it clean. Okay, then you have a clean breakfast, which is very similar, pasture raised, good quality eggs that you're gonna spend on average $2 more a dozen, uncured, no sugar added bacon, which realistically you could make ahead of time so you have it prepared and it's easy to go that's going to be a much better solution than going for frozen sausage. Much cleaner, much better fat profile, much higher quality form of saturated fat as well. And then the cheese, aged Gouda or Parmesan. Gouda tastes delicious in eggs and Gouda is exceptionally high in vitamin K2. And because it's aged, you don't get all the garbage that comes along with it and the cruddy casein proteins. So here we have not even a real cheese. Here, the amount of cheese that you would need is negligible compared to that to get the same flavor profile. It's kind of a no-brainer. And then maybe you add a little avocado to make it clean, and then your coffee, or matcha, I forgot an A there, instead of using butter, you use ghee. But guess what? Ghee is still about the same price when you actually weigh out the servings. So ghee is going to be a concentrated form of, or clarified form of butter, so it's not going to have all the milk solids in it. Put a little bit of heavy cream instead of half and half or a flavored creamer, and a little bit of monk fruit or stevia instead of Splenda. Voila, you just turned a dirty breakfast into a clean breakfast without much thought, right? Then let's go into like a post-workout snack. Let's say you had your breakfast and maybe you're working out. A dirty example, just to show you, it's, it doesn't mean it's a terrible thing if you're doing dirty keto. It's not the end of the world. It's just not hard to switch it up. I did dirty keto for a long time. Dirty keto is gonna be using like a cheap whey protein concentrate. You don't typically want to concentrate, you typically want an isolate. And then maybe having a peanut butter, a little bit of peanut butter again, and a cheese stick. Peanut butter is very high omega-6. That's biggest, the biggest thing that we see with dirty keto is it's mainly rich in omega-6s versus omega-3s. That's the biggest, biggest change there. A clean option, pea protein or whey protein isolate. It's a subtle shift there. Pea protein I prefer. But if you're going to go with whey, if you strongly prefer whey, use a whey protein isolate, not a concentrate. If you want my recommendation on a pea protein, I stand wholeheartedly behind Sun Warrior's pea protein, which there's a link down below in the description. If you click the little arrow, there's a link down below to get special pricing on Sun Warrior's Warrior Blend, which is a blend of pea and hemp along with some other things. So it's a very clean, clean keto-friendly protein. Highly, highly, highly recommend it there great supporter of this channel and a huge, huge product in my pantry. Uh, and then maybe you have some macadamia nuts, okay? So macadamia nuts gonna make it really easy just to get your good fat profile, very low omega-6, very, very low. So you could go to town on nuts and be fine. Let's talk about beverages that you might have too. Uh, maybe you're gonna have in the dirty category, diet soda. And then energy drinks, Rockstar Zeros, Monster Zeros, Bangs, all those things that are just loaded with sucralose and uh, aspartame and uh, acesulfame potassium. 
Uh, RTD shakes, a lot of those ready to drink meal replacement shakes are not good to go. They're usually full of garbage, full of preservatives, not something you want to sip on. Those ice drinks are loaded with sucralose. Okay, then you have Crystal Light, get asked that one a lot. That is definitely a dirty keto option when you have other options. Clean would be water, <laughs> green tea, Zevia, okay, those Stevia sweetened sodas. Uh, those Bay or Bai, however you say it, uh, drinks, which are like the sweetened coconut drinks. Uh, it's a little bit of coconut water and some usually erythritol and monk fruit. Or like Lakanto makes a liquid monk fruit lemon drop that you can just like drip into some water. That's perfect, or infused water. See, it doesn't have to be this huge dramatic change. Now let's look at a sample lunch. A dirty lunch might be a fast food burger. You go to McDonald's, you go to Carl's Jr., you get a burger without the bun as a lettuce wrap. Uh, it's obviously going to have processed cheese on it, so it's going to be probably less than 50% real cheese. The rest just processed trans fats and garbage. Kind of preaching to the choir here. Pork rinds, which is a very fine line because pork rinds can be totally good, but most of the inexpensive cheap pork rinds like the Max brand and stuff like that are going to have MSG in them, which is definitely going to be dirty keto. And then mayonnaise, most of the mayonnaise you get is going to be soy based. A quick tip, all you have to do is flip it around and if it says soybean oil as the first or second ingredient, you know it's low quality mayonnaise, which definitely puts you into the dirty keto category. Uh, Hellman's, Best Foods, all that stuff is definitely dirty keto and that's what almost all the restaurants use. Uh, then ketchup. Ketchup has a bunch of sugar in it. That is not keto. That's going to kick you out of keto. Okay? Then we have the clean option. Take a look at this. Tell me this doesn't look good. A cob salad with some chicken breast, a hard boiled egg, loads of bacon, loads of avocado, a good quality dressing, usually would prefer like an olive oil based dressing, but a little bit of ranch dressing that's made with canola oil isn't going to kill you. It's much better than soybean oil though. Uh, and then some nuts on there, maybe some almonds, I mean, yeah, whatever, pecans, macadamia nuts would be preferred. You see, you can still have, you can still go out to eat and still have a clean keto meal. It doesn't have to be dirty keto. A lot of times, like for lunch, I'll usually actually just skip it and do a shake and do like a pea protein shake, you know, use that Sun Warrior or something there if I'm not in the mood for lunch, because a lot of times I'm not that hungry for lunch. Then dinner. Here's a perfect thing, right? Dirty keto would be getting some good old fashioned greasy wings. We all love them, right? But when you look at chicken wings, chicken wings are mostly skin and mostly really dark meat and poultry has a very, very poor fatty acid profile. So what happens is you load up on fat from poultry. I would much rather you get fat from a red meat, believe it or not, because they're going to have a lot more of the antibiotics and things like that in a poultry fat than you would otherwise. So anyway, chicken wings are definitely dirty. And then we might get deceived by cauliflower crust pizza. So cauliflower crust, so you're getting some veggies in, doesn't mean it's magically clean. If it has a bunch of that low quality shredded cheese, a bunch of preservative filled pepperoni, a bunch of preservative filled sausage, and standard marinara, which has like 12 grams of carbohydrates per quarter cup, 12 grams of sugar even, that's not good. And then you top it off with a Caesar salad loaded with Caesar dressing that has soybean oil, because most like pizza restaurants and stuff like that are going to use very cheap dressings. Look at the clean option. You might spend a couple bucks more, but if you're making it at home, it wouldn't be too bad, especially if you used flank steak. New York strip or a flank steak or maybe a chicken breast or maybe a piece of salmon, which I did a dollar store keto haul. Yes, dollar store, and they have wild caught salmon for a dollar. Wild, so don't tell me you can't afford salmon when you can go to the Dollar Tree. I'm serious. Okay, melted ghee, put that on the steak. Come on, if you want to like, cut it up into strips and make a taco, have some guacamole. That's perfectly clean keto, right? Then some steamed veggies with a little bit of butter, like grass-fed butter and coconut oil on it. And then maybe you melt some Parmesan on it. Tell me that that isn't delicious and you wouldn't think that that is a cheat meal. That is super good and that is clean keto, okay? So point is, is that dirty and, ke dirty and clean keto are so similar, but it's all kind of this nuancey stuff which might drive you nuts. But my other point in saying this is don't get super hung up on it. Pay attention to the soybean oil, pay attention to the omega-6 profile, pay attention to the kinds of nuts, and pay attention to the carbohydrates that you would normally get out of a lot of these sneaky foods. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to check out Sun Warrior down below, and I'll see you tomorrow.